first things I want to ask you all is, have any of you um, held or worked with rats before? No. <laughs> I have a great job. My job is to look out for both the animals and their welfare, as well as the interests of the researchers and the science that needs to be done. Right. Anybody afraid of or nervous about rats? No. Nope. Okay, they're <laughs> wonderful animals. One of the fun things I get to do is hold classes with students, and we'll start with the very basics about how to tell if an animal is healthy or distressed, and then beyond that, how to humanely handle and restrain the animal and get done whatever it is needs to be done. These are young little guys, they're approximately five weeks old. You can see that they do like to hide, they like to feel hidden and, and secure. It's called thigmotaxis, they're animals that like to feel something gently pressing against them. And we're going to go ahead and incorporate the fact that they like that into how we're going to handle them today. What I like to get across to these students is the fact that we do care about the animals that we work with. We talk to them about how to tell if an animal is healthy or not and how to comfort that animal, how to consider what might frighten or distress an animal and how to work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and get a rat by the tail, kind of nervous. Nervous. support the body, and fold it up inside there, okay, there you go. Aww. You can go ahead and you can scratch his little head gently and talk to him. One of the first things that we really want to emphasize for anybody who's going to be working with these animals is a calm, non-stressed animal is going to be a much better research subject. I want people to be able to make informed decisions about research and not only its necessity but how they think about it. I like people to experience it, see what it looks like, to actually handle an animal, how they're housed, how they're cared for, and I like it for it to be a positive experience. So the next thing I'm going to have you do is listen to the animal's heart and listen to your own heart. Can you hear that? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really fun. Isn't that reason? Why don't you yeah. listen to yourself? Yeah, not nearly as fast. I've known since I was five years old that I wanted to be a veterinarian. I was the kid in the neighborhood who was looking for the birds that had crashed into the window or whatever other animal sorts of things I could do. And I went through college with that same aim and was lucky enough to achieve that dream. While I was in practice, a vaccine came out for feline leukemia, and I thought, I don't just want to be here vaccinating cats for this, I want to go help invent that kind of stuff. And how is it tested? Who cares for the animals that are used in producing and, and discovering how these vaccines work? I then went back for an additional three years of training to specialize in laboratory animal medicine. But we'll usually separate them before that. For me, the fulfillment seemed to come with the research, the things that were cutting edge, that were making a difference in the lives of both people and animals. I designed um, a little experiment for you all today. It's just completely observational. And the idea behind it is to get you thinking a little bit about um, how we uh, decide to use animals in research and how we might design what we're going to be doing with them. So Having veterinarians in this field has been really key to making the work humane and the trick is not to just change the environment so that we don't feel so bad about keeping an animal enclosed in a small space but rather finding out what are the animals needs for space for companionship for things to do and I want you to just write down your observations of what the animals are doing well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, time you for just a few minutes it's different talking about it in class and then actually handling the animals I never realized that they would be so like gentle and cute and it makes it more real. You are doing research on animals. You're not just talking about research on animals. It's very, very close to the tube and distance compared to the other ones where they are. Being a bio major and wanting to do research as an undergrad, getting this sort of training does kind of expose you to um, being able to work more with those type of animals. Cage number A. The technology that will be used to take x-rays of us or do other kinds of imaging on us, the pain relievers that will be given, the antibiotics, the techniques for surgery that might be done on us, all those sorts of things rely so heavily on animal research to help us discover preventions, treatments, and cures. It's impossible to imagine where science and medicine would be without that ability.